Yeah, today with me is uh, Marcello Palozzo, a person I have met uh, already back in 2017 and I was really amazed by the skill that I saw, uh, the elasticity, and uh, but uh, even more amazed by the persona behind the movement, by, by the smile and by the, by the lightning in the eyes, a, a little devilish uh, <laughs> approach to the task, uh, really sort of a happy, happy rebel. And uh, then we made a contact and I said, uh, Marcello, what are you doing? And back then you were still uh, one, one leg in the parkour world, that's where you came from. Uh, and I said, I, I would love to learn this one day. And seven years later, <laughs> Seven years later, uh, I, I watch the social media and I see uh, Marcello is now presenting his own uh, material, his own work. Once you've seen it, you can't unsee it. It's, uh, <laughs> it's something eye-catching, it's, nice it's something say. inviting. You want to, to touch upon that work, you want to touch upon that material. I understood immediately something is happening and uh, I went to see you in, in Italy and uh, in an intensive myself and then uh, now welcome here in Vilnius thank you very uh, much working uh, working here with our community trying out uh, your methodologies on us and us being able to to work a little bit on what you call environmental practice so Marcello uh, first of all welcome to Vilnius a beautiful place which you have never heard of no of I've never heard <laughs> <laughs> I mean I really didn't expect but it's truly a fantastic place both from the natural the urban surroundings uh, the vibes that you get the atmosphere yeah, and the people this is very unique I you know it was a very pleasant surprise overall so welcome I, I must say uh, b before we uh, we started this workshop i had to scout around the town and look for for the rails to look for the walls to look for for various kinds of things that you send sure. me a list of and i started seeing uh, vilnius myself in another way the way i didn't see this town before this happened because you introduced uh, the theme environmental practice i i was once again uh, taken out of my studio into the environment we live in tell me a little bit about uh, what this environmental practice is and where does it come from? So first of all, uh, the environmental movement practice is a discipline that comes and emerges out of the understanding that uh, we, are, we have always been somewhat in a relationship with the rest of, the, of our surroundings. We do not exist in a vacuum and I believe the fundamental uh, essence of every phenomena is not the phenomena itself, but it's the relationship that it starts to build with everything that uh, is there. So either another body, uh, your, own, your own body, the, the environment, and the inner, uh, in a way, manifestation of the psyche. Now, from this understanding, uh, it's obvious that if you want to work on self-development and self-growth, you need to go out there and expose yourself to a lot of different scenarios. Because if you stay in, into this dark room and you think you're going to experience life from there, you're very delusional. <laughs> so out of this understanding, I started to craft a, a series of platforms and uh, processes uh, for the sake of uh, developing this physical literacy yes, that uh, were not present. And I, I do so through the eyes of movement uh, and not, uh, of course, just through the eyes of, I don't know, like the anthropologist you know, that would go there and would say, yeah, this is, this is, for example, a known place and we need to inject some meaning into it by doing some kind of an activity, but I don't know what. No, we know precisely what we're doing. It's uh, like we are go working with the body and through the body and we are discovering with it. So we, we are interested for sure in observing the environment, changing the way we view it, and then uh, you know, experiencing ourselves through it. Uh, but at the same time, we are also interested in allowing it to change us, no? so, which is uh, something that changes because, for example, the, mountain, the, the person that goes to do mountaineering uh, would go out in the, in the mountain and climb the mountain just by itself. Um, but, uh, you know, and, and, and he, he would always need to go there and be immersed in that specific environment. Instead, as uh, we are trying to do this in every situation possible. You know, like, uh, for example, in the city, we try to subvert the meanings that the places have. And because they're so available, uh, we use them. We use them for, 
movement developments for perceiving life differently and also to live the daily life in a more authentic and vibrant way. Oh, but even uh, on the level of uh, training actually, training the physical capacities, uh, when you introduce uh, the viewpoint that uh, you know, we have to go out there and, uh, and try things on the real walls, on, on, on the real rails. It, it brings the question of, uh, yeah, in the fitness world and in, in the training world, how do we choose our goals, mm -hmm. right? Because we have so, so much of uh, sports or training activities which seem to be um, circling in, the, in, in this never-ending circle of always preparing for something. But, but actually now here we are really... Uh, mm, exercising the skill we are climbing on top of that wall or, 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 or we are engaging in the creative uh, uh, communication through the rail uh, yes. yeah totally uh, look for me uh, this is essential when I'm setting some goals and setting some directions I look at what can be potentially the most open field uh, for our development and our exploration that is, for example, if I do some work on a bar and I work towards certain goals like a front lever, a back lever, things like this, eventually they will hit, they, they are just um, autotelic, so they, they, they stay there. No, like you reach the front lever, good, nice, you did uh, maybe an interesting process there, but then you're never going to use it again unless you do a front lever, right? Instead, if you start to go out and you go into the different environments and you start to develop certain skills that then will represent themselves, then there you can really start to develop the full complexity of human movement. Like, so for example, it would make, make total sense to me to go out and to train, how, how do I traverse a wall, how do I climb on top of it, how do I go down, how do I train my strength, how do I train uh, movement intelligence rather than you know, dexterity on top of the wall, uh, how do I craft motor problems, how do I see it, right? Because then in there I can create improvisational scenarios, free association combinations of the different elements and then uh, it will, in a way, all the little goals that I start to craft for myself, I will continue to put in a bag that I continue to use. Two things that we are having here with, with this kind of practice, one is I become able to overcome the obstacle, right? So, so that's, that's one thing which is already coming in, in, into, into me, giving me joy and, and, and self-confidence. Uh, uh, but there's another thing which you're bringing in, uh, let's make the wall or let's make the rail or some other kind of setting, the water for example, mm -hmm. that you do, let's make it into, our, in, into my training playground. Mm -hmm. Which means that the movement part or the complexity part or the development of a human being is still there. Because I might learn to overcome the wall yeah. or I might learn to swim, but does it really mean that I'm actually diving into all the various possibilities? So, I think this is really uh, something you stepped on. Yeah, I, I believe this is something new um, that I, I wanted to introduce because I noticed that we were. W what is important is to actually manage um, to create complexity out of us, no? Yes. Like to create, to create. But in order to create, you don't have to have an immense complexity in space. So actually, you go to certain scenarios that have constraints. Yeah, so like for example, you go to a, a simple sidewalk. No? Uh -huh. Okay, sidewalk. For example, yeah. This, like this, this we find we everywhere. Do, 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 <laughs> but like, we do everywhere. 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 Yeah, yeah. Okay, like a little step on, in the sidewalk. And, and it's for free. It's for free. It's yes. everywhere, right? It's everywhere. Everyone can have it. And then in there, you start to activate the imagination. It's like a, a, the kid with a, a straw. And I leave the kid with a straw, close the door, put a camera, and then there you will find you will see creativity you will see the, the 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 beauty of the human mind right so you go to certain specific platforms in the environment like uh, choose the, the staircases some steps some uh, just the ground with some uh, shapes uh, drawn on it with chalk a wall a bar like a vertical and a horizontal bar and instead of creating you know like instead of facing the complexity that is already there we craft it yeah. You know, and then out of this crafting, eventually, uh, we observe all the degrees of freedom that are present, all the intricacies of motor control, all the, the possible coordinations installed inside the body, uh, 
all the the utilization of the senses and all of this is uh, extremely interesting and this is the only way in which i believe one can truly understand who he is right because if, if you don't face all these different facets of which you're made of your investigation will always be superficial yeah we could uh, almost say that uh, human beings we tend to fall in, in, into one uh, side of the scale or the other. I, either we immerse in the environment completely, so I, I climb the mountain and, and, and therefore my goal is to get on top of the mountain no matter what or how. And then the other one is getting so obsessed with my own inner uh, feelings and, and experiences where I get uh, totally disconnected from uh, what they are aimed at or, yeah. or how they can be used. So, so here we, I feel we strike a nice balance between uh, being out and working with the real riddle and at the same time studying ourselves and studying the potential, right? But this is the idea, that's why environmental movement practice in a way, no? Because environmental practice alone would be, for example, you go out and you hike in the forest, right? Uh, and then the movement practice is you, are, you can be in the studio, you can be you know, everywhere. But the environmental movement practice then it, it creates this connection so it's just i'm interested in the body because let's be clear of course i'm interested into all the whatever i can become in all the all the potentials in the discoveries of the self but at the same time i realize also that if we manage to get to this point it is because we were constantly being influenced by the dynamical systems that are present no therefore we go to these systems but pointing the eyes inwards right right so and, and we constantly have these uh, interrelations and through this vibration no like not allowing us to get completely drawn on one end or the other then there is an immense growth and like any uh, field that is uh, attempting to do this it requires a lot of sensitivity and it feels like a dance right you know i i i remember in rome uh it was a hot summer, I must, <laughs> I must admit. Okay, we were dying in the we were dying, but, but anyway, you said, what can, what can be better? You know, we are outside here with the wind in our hair and uh, uh, we are creating all these uh, possible variations around, around this abstract object. And, uh, and, and then the thought came to me, yes, actually, uh, uh, as human beings, we don't have a set goal for life, right? Nobody told us what, what life is or what, it, what it's for and in a way. Uh, you could say uh, probably the goal is to get uh, connected to where we are, to, to a place where we are, to get connected to yourself, so to say, not to live in the, this virtual, uh, virtual world of language or uh, imagery on, on the, the screen of uh, the phone, uh, to get here. Mm -hmm. and, and to start feeling like this creativity and, and uh, the possibilities are starting to, to come. Yes. So that was a beautiful moment. Yeah, big time. And also I believe because uh, in a way meaning is something that we assign and we create and we craft. So in a way um, we always want to find the best places and the best settings for us to continue to experience right, the totality of life, all the different flavors and at the same time continuing to discover. Right, and there is where it's, the, the the balance is struck, um, and uh, you know. And another thing is that meaning, in a way, comes from this idea of also making sense. Right? Again, I go back to this idea of the senses. Making sense means it means that your perceptions matter. Therefore, you need to continue to immerse in a situation that gives you a lot of different stimuli. No, and out of this, all these stimuli, then you start to understand the world. When do we start to make sense? When, when do we start? When we are babies, no? Like we come out and then we use the language of uh, hearing, seeing, tasting, smelling, yeah? And the kinesthetic sense to start to create meaning in our life. So the more you can perceive and the more you can be exposed to life, to the various environment and so forth, the more you will actually have meaning. I sometimes ask myself uh, this question, not sometimes, actually every day, over and over again, what, <laughs> nice. is it, what is it that we're doing here? What's really the goal? And, and I come up with words, uh, the self-discovery, the development, uh, advancing uh, the potential of the human being. Maybe it's a next step in evolution. Yeah, but ultimately, I, if, if I try to wrap it all up, uh, I would say that we are working uh, on meaning, on meaning of life. Uh, 
Because meaning is not something in the language, just like you say. Yeah. It has something to do with the senses, it has something to do with the body and the way we operate, physically operate in this world. Mm -hmm. Because if we are physically uh, not there, we are not there, we are dead. <laughs> we are finished, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So, sure. so to be is to be uh, physically here, yes. in, in close proximity. I cannot uh, have a, a lover and, and, and connect on, on Zoom. And, and Not yet. <laughs> I, hope, <laughs> no, no, okay. yeah, I hope it continues. But no. you know, in, in the world where uh, you know we are in, increasingly developing technologies, and and uh, we could say that AI ultimately will take over everything a human being can do these days. Uh, you know, Yuval Harari he says, uh, you know, we are facing the age of useless human beings. At some point, we will have no work to do and we will be able to, to have enough food on the table just, just, by our, just by advancement of the technologies, then we will really come to the question, what is my life for? I don't have uh, children to feed. I don't have to follow my daily uh, requirements of doing this and that job. What is it for me to do? I will, I will have to really come back to this uh, physical uh, existence, reality and, existence and yeah. to ask once again, what does it mean to be in this physical reality? Uh, do I have a, a depth of perception? Do I have a, a sense of the senses, mm -hmm. <laughs> to say? Uh, and I think somewhat uh, what we are doing here is, is, is really bringing back uh, the meaning to our lives by becoming embodied again. 100%. Also, I wanted to point uh, another little direction that uh, came to mind as you were talking, which is, you know, you said one of the fundamental things that we're doing here is also the connection. but what kind of connection and how do we do this? What is in common between all the various systems in the universe? You know, like from the microscopic system to the Laniakia, no? like the, pos the, the most possible uh, large part of the universe. I believe it to be a certain synergy, like a certain harmony. Uh, and this refinement of harmony that we can find if we look inside the body. The body is harmony. It's like if, if harmony is gone, you're dead. No, as you were saying. Yeah. Harmony is gone, it's dead. So a big part of what we're doing, we are working towards creating these synergies towards the other people, towards ourselves, towards, towards this, this beautiful practice in which we are immersed. And you, you are working through this in this harmony in all sorts of ways. Yeah? And the more the, the practice is uh, refined, the more it will allow for this to happen. So, either on the level of yeah, me and you working on a new skill together, but also when you're working on your own body, right? no? Yeah, like today we just not noticed the rain <laughs> is, is upon us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah uh, even today we had uh, this beautiful exercise for the eyes. Uh, something you don't train in the gym, something uh, that probably very few disciplines uh, engage, the sports disciplines or training disciplines engage as, 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 as something to pay attention to. Or even the, the articulation of the foot or even the articulation of the hands some, uh, or, or, the, or the inner ear and, and the balance, some subtle things that, that we have in our organism. Or uh, you mentioned the examples of how you know, crazy human beings, they, they, they can uh, get in, in, in touch with their senses and uh, with their bodies and do the things unimaginable. The escapologists or uh, you know, the, the monks that, uh, that can increase their body temperature or, or, or can shrink their bodies and get in the tube. Yeah, like the tube. Right? <laughs> yeah. So I, I was just thinking, you know, the potential is there and unused potential. You know, so if, if, you, if you take a human race 10,000 years ago, we can agree we were not that advanced as we are today. So we progressed, we progressed big time. Mm -hmm. But if we think about the individual, on the individual level, uh, back then and now, put them in the natural environment, which I mean is not the financial systems environment, but let, let's put him in the, in the environment of things, of, 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 of trees, of animals, of other people. Let's see who can actually survive, who can, uh, who can make their way out and what the coordinative system, the coordination system that they have to understand the world, we would see that uh, we are numb. Mm -hmm. We became really numb in our senses, in our understandings. Uh, we know where this we, we know the stomach by looking at the atlas but we don't feel our own stomach we don't know where it is we can't really put our fingers and touch it 
what if what if we actually uh, degrade it <laughs> the, evo the evolution did not serve us well this and now and and probably what we are doing here or the question we are asking the quest we are upon is 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 how can we actually take back what we lost and 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 trust upon those uh, subtle senses that we probably deep down somewhere they're there and maybe if we if we make them alive once again maybe something in our lives would uh, would change certainly certainly this is uh, uh, this has been my assumption from day one that if there is a potential road that um, I can ride, I'm gonna go with my train you know, and go all the way beyond the rainbow. You know? and, and then when you get to the end of the rainbow, then you're gonna have a new arm in a way. No? Yeah. It's like, and then, That's how the evolution works, yes, right? If then, you need something, it, it comes out. It comes out. If you don't need it, it go, goes out. In a way, yeah, it, it's selected, right? And then what happens is, the que some people would ask the question, why would I need another arm? But it's not a good question to ask because uh, once you have the third arm, first give me and then I tell you how I'm going to use it, you know. Uh, and, and because it's hard for us, we are full of bias in the future and we cannot know exactly where our actions are going to lead us. But for sure, the, exp the, 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 uh, the evolution of all these potentials that are inside are essential. So for example, tell me, how do I improve my vision? How do I improve the quickness of the eyes? How do I improve? Who decided that for me, uh, reading a certain amount of words per minute were, uh, w w was, was okay and I, I couldn't go step beyond to the next level, right? Or when I'm doing some acrobatic maneuvers, why don't I think that I could, I could do them better? You know, if I would uh, learn how to um, reorient and re retune the, the equilibrioception, so all the inner ear and the vision and so forth. And the same with many other things inside the body. Oh, it's amazing. Uh, as, as kids, we learn so many things and, and we learn to put ourselves out in this world to orient and, and, and to work with the different objects and to communicate with people, uh, first of all, physically. But then we reach a certain threshold where uh, we think it's okay, it's done. Yeah. <laughs> and there's nothing yeah. else to do. You now I can get from, from, from my car to the shop and back or from <laughs> point A to totally. B, I can walk. But did I really uh, use the potential of walking coordination? Uh, did I develop it to the fullest and where is the limit? Uh, we think that development belongs to a certain uh, age. Yeah. It depends to a certain period, period of life and later on we develop some other faculties. But what if we continue developing physically? Yeah. This, would, this is actually what we are attempting to do. And the things that are coming out of this are, are incredible, are amazing, are uh, really something uh, unique. Uh, and uh, it is binding us, it is um, giving us a lot of meaning and it's uh, driving us into you know, potentially a new reality of humanity. Um, now, uh, you know, this thing that you were talking about, the, the OK threshold, Mariano Sigmund was talking about this, right? And it's, uh, it's very important to recognize it as a, like a conditioning from the world, you know? Somebody said that this is fine and that is not. And then this, as we were kids, it was absorbed as, uh, you know, some, just a generalization that we've done. And then this became automatic and we forgot about asking this, uh, this question. It's like, where else can it go? Yeah, like, uh, okay, we, we have the regular sports, but uh, what if there is something else? Like, nobody asks this question anymore because it kind of the, the, all the society is driving you precisely to one point rather than another point, right? And what we are, we are challenging here is this process is just saying okay but who installed this belief system inside of me and why don't we just continue to develop physically or mentally yeah or uh, why don't don't I try to become more dexterous or what happens if I close my eyes and now I'm gonna walk walk around town using echolocation for two years so I just click my tongue and I, I map space by listening to sounds and shadows of sound yes it's incredible where this is going to lead you, how much it is going to expand your perceptions, it's uh, untapped. And precisely what we are attempting to do here, no, is uh, going into the map and saying, well, th th look, it's dark. <laughs> now, this is the flashlight, let's, let's attempt to now shed a bit of light there. And many times what happens if you're, you were looking for an island and you find uh, you know, just another piece of the sea that is not giving you much. But sometimes you find an island and on top of it an amazing, an amazing treasure. Exactly, exactly. So 
you know, there, there might be people here watching us, and uh, if they have survived until the, <laughs> this yes, point, maybe. <laughs> uh, if, if, they, if people, if you're still here, if you're listening to us, let's get to the more um, down-to-earth uh, part of this conversation. So, uh, we are in uh, the process, or. Uh, the, the process of uh, ed education. We are in the educational process of human development through the body, through movement. So, uh, number one thing to say is that uh, it's not only about training, it's not only about getting body fit or lose weight or, or reach some parameters, it's about the development of a human being to probably the next evolutional step. But now, down to earth, so what are those first steps that you would uh, recommend or w where would you start? Because you started somewhere at some point and now you are uh, driving around, uh, uh, well, hopefully driving, but probably flying <laughs> around <laughs> depends, the world yeah. and, 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 and teaching, uh, teaching what you have to offer. Mm, what is it that you suggest people to do, actually? Mm. Okay, yeah, this is a powerful question. Well, first of all, I want to uh, disconnect a bit from the, the, the fitness mentality, no? like that many people are doing, you know, like where do you want to start? Well, first of all, you start from your capacity. You know, like uh, you are not strong enough, you're not powerful enough, you know. But actually, we, we already, we just said, we are more interested in the complexity, in the dexterity, no? in how do we solve the problem. So this stuff can be started from day one. So, instead of going and uh, isolating everything to the m microscopic bit, like uh, trying to take table salt and then go into the grain and then eventually it's breaking it down to the point where it's not salt anymore, it's now Na and Cl, right? What we do, we work with this um, more fractal approach, no? So, uh, from a large field, we go back to the minimal constituent, which are still certain skills which are still certain uh, situations, no? So I would say, where should people start? Well, first of all, to install um, a series of these uh, platforms and fractals and then uh, work directly upon them. So for example, and, and to making sure that the, the flavors of all these fractals are, are present. Now I'm gonna get more concrete. Yeah, examples, yes. please. Examples, examples. Yes. examples. For example, you want to um, develop um, ways to displace in space. So getting better in climbing getting better in uh, moving and in uh, around and like uh, so in complex athleticism and then you want to get better at maintaining your position so balancing and then you want to get better at swimming and navigating inside an aquatic environment let's say no you have a few of these so we touched upon something that is more you know like uh, um, uh, you know like uh, in a way more upper body you know, and then uh, lower body than something that puts everything together so uh, all throughout your, your week, you can have something, let's say you, you can work a little bit on the climbing maneuvers, a little bit on athleticism, a little bit into the water, and then a little bit more in acrobatics. Now, even more in detail, what happens is, well, climbing where? Where? Okay, so I would suggest instead of going out into the mountains, you go out and probably, like most people are living in a city, right? So you go out and you find a wall, and then you learn how to traverse a wall. For example, can you, can you go like five steps and back? Yeah, just hanging on a wall. And then can you uh, learn how to climb on top of a wall? Can you pull yourself up? Can you uh, traverse while you are in a support position? Yes, on this wall. And then uh, this uh, for what concerns climbing, for example. And then we would go more into, I don't know, the, um, the athleticism. So I would say people would, should, should start more from the coordinations. Okay, okay how, how do I uh, coordinate the various body parts when I'm uh, initiating a run, when I'm walking, no? when, uh, when I'm interacting with a partner? And the way I do it, usually I, I start people from um, a, a little um, um, stencil in a way on the ground, the chablon. There are some, uh, um, um, let's say, markings on the ground, simil similar to hopscotch, right? Uh, but three-dimensional in space, where people have to hop in all these little, uh, this little uh, points and they have to be careful and they have to be accurate and they have to be quick and they start to develop this footwork. It somewhat right. reminds of uh, 
probably trail running where uh, yeah you go you go fast but only as fast as you can still cognitively perceive what's going on, on under your feet so it's not only strength and endurance it's also yeah. uh, cognitive capacity to, to judge the environment right? judge the environment exactly and then if you want to continue to develop your balance skills it's like for example can you stand on a rail this is very, a very nice practice because it's uh, it's very much binary so it's just if you make a mistake you're down no uh, and this uh, of course creates a lot of uh, Mm, good responses in the system because once you start to get the hang of it like uh, how do I actually manage to uh, hold myself up here then you start to get the satisfaction and then you want to go back right and then this um, is also uh, yeah very powerful for the self right and you, you're starting to gaining all these uh, these skills and then the same rail can be used as a as a bridge into the some acrobatic maneuvers right uh, and uh, and so forth and you know, and then you go to the pool and you, you learn how to swim. What, of course, like, it's, it's, uh, it's hard to just give like, protocols like this. Exactly. You know? but, but the idea that I want, uh, I want people to understand is don't be limited and don't start at capacity alone. So like doing pull-ups, going to the gym, you know, like the, to do the classic fitness endeavors. But start already from fields where you can move where you can actually do things, right? Where you can explore the, the, the complexity, both of the environment of yourself. I'm just thinking just as uh, almost a very simple example, uh, allow a group of kids into, into a place with, a, with the gymnastic rings. Uh, none of them will try to, uh, will, will attempt uh, the pull up as their first choice. First thing they will do is that they will swing. For sure. They will swing and they will try to travel with it and, and, and play in various ways. And this is this is what I'm learning from you is, is to see that you know the, the the bar is not primarily for doing the pull-ups. You can do uh, the variety of things on it. All you can, sort of things. You can use your legs, and, and then the fitness mentality would say, "Yeah, but the one-arm chin is, uh, is 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 really the etalon you want to achieve. Uh, probably is great, but on, on the practical level, uh, there are very few situations where you will have to do one-arm chin." Uh, in most situations, you can have, use another arm or you can use your legs, unless you don't have them, but then you're <laughs> but lighter. Then you're, <laughs> <laughs> then you're nice. lighter. Right. Yeah, <laughs> so of course. Of you course. don't have to pull so hard. <laughs> you know, I'm just, I'm just thinking, you know, learning to use what you have, isn't it more important than actually building capacity alone? Yes, totally. totally. Building the intellect of and this uh, body. So yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's like uh, you know, this morning I was mentioning, it's like imagine you're a kid, well, it's the first thing you do, you, uh, you just learn to stand up and now you start to squat. It's just, no, it's not gonna happen. The next thing is gonna be the ones to start to walk. So the first time you hang on a bar, well, first time you hang. And also you explore what you can do while you're hanging. So you brachiate, yeah? and then, which is in essence the locomotions uh, happening in a suspens suspensory behavior. This is how they're, they're, they're named in the animal kingdom, right? And then how do you swing? So I would go from hanging, brachiation, swinging, that's where I start. Or how do I climb a bar? And then later on, when you feel you're being limited by your capacities in some form, then I'm going to work on it. But I don't start there. This idea of having the fundamentals now that you, you must all the time reach and until you're there, you cannot continue to pursue other things. It's off because I can. This is like, how do I know? Because I can. You know? Because if you, we put somebody in, in in uh, definition, this is what the pull-up, pull, push-up looks like. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Sixty, maybe seventy percent of the population will say, "I can't do this. Mm -hmm. It's not possible for me. The push-up is not for me." Uh, but actually, every human being can resist the gravity. Yeah. And there are so many ways to resist it. So very nice. So if uh, we approach it with, with the idea of what are all the creative and uh, interesting ways, uh, difficult and easy ways to resist gravity, uh, everybody's in. Everybody's participating. Yeah. Nobody's out. So so then the physical engagement in the world becomes uh, so much more uh, open to everybody. Yeah. So I'm thinking that this, that, that the fitness approach, uh, what it did, the training approach, <laughs> what we had in schools, the um, yeah, the the abs, the abs, the, the abs were <laughs> the, the push-ups, the squats, the pulls. Uh, they made our understanding of uh, physical engagement in the world so limited, and 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 uh, we got disconnected 
people started saying things like, I hate sports, I hate physical activity, I yeah. hate to move, it's not possible. <laughs> yeah, it's not possible. It's yeah, cultural. It's, yeah, it's, it's also, I hate it, you know, yeah. if I just need to stay there. And my, my practice is I do push-ups all the time. Just, wow, what a crazy yeah, thing to do, right? Uh, being a human is so much uh, vaster and larger than this, right? Uh, Guy Debord in the Society of Spectacle was arguing that people are starting to become more and more spectators. Yes, and this is a, a, a great point that you're making is we need to make people participants and everyone can be participants in the games. We don't want to have some games that are so hard nobody can join. We want to have everyone in and let me tell you, once you're in the game, you want to continue playing. But if you didn't find the, the entry point, then eventually you're gonna have, you, you, you will not even imagine what is there for you. So I believe everyone that is practicing this also has the responsibility to make sure that is uh, choosing the entry points for the people that are starting to join wisely. No? And the, the same people that uh, are, are maybe listening to this conversation, you know, uh, make sure that you find, that you find like a supportive community that uh, actually allows you to, start, to initiate this from the beginning. Just if you didn't move in the first uh, 10 minutes of what you're doing, uh, something is off. No? Uh, like maybe you're moving the spine, maybe you're doing a little climb, or maybe you're working on your footwork, maybe you're any of this. This is all uh, good signs that you are practicing something similar to us. Whereas if instead the first thing you do is they tell you, you know, like now we're gonna work on doing pull-ups and push-ups and squats and this is not what we are doing. One thing maybe to, to, to clarify a little bit here is uh, Mm. We are all well aware what kind of body response uh, does the classical uh, push-up uh, provoke or the classical pull-up uh, and, and, and the abs work, it, it, it invites certain response of the body and builds certain structure and shape. And then the question which comes our way, I guess, uh, what is the body response of what we're doing? If, if throughout the day while we move, we probably don't repeat one uh, identical move to the other, right? We are always a little bit twisted and turned and curled, very much aware of the structure that we are, very much observing uh, not to have le leakages in, in, mm -hmm. in the joints, but still very complex and very varied. Varied. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what kind of body response does that invite? What mm -hmm. would you say? Yeah, I would say, you know, if you behave, humans have this incredible capacity for adaptability, right? So if you move like a fluid, you will become a fluid. Right? If you move like a solid, you will become a rock. No? If you decide to move like air, you're gonna be a rush of wind. No? If you become, and, and this thing, if, if you... If, what, what if you do it all? What if you do it all? Then what happens is that you can, you can have this immense variety of uh, elemental aspects. No? If, if we stay on the same uh, um, analogy. No, which means, uh, which is more in line with the totality of the being that we are. Because I am not a bodybuilder, for example, or but I, uh, or in a way, I'm not, let's say, on, on the same. So I'm not a rock. No, but I'm also not just an elastic band. But I'm also not something that behaves like a padding. I'm, I'm all of these things at once together with a governing mind that can also switch between the different states that is plastic that can respond to any any kind of stimulus stimulus that is out there and then through this there is this this sense the sensation of bliss it just it feels feels good how do i know that uh, this is potentially something that uh, i mean we are aiming in a, in a powerful direction because you go through all these flavors you come out of the tsunami and then you're crashing on the bed at the end of the day it's like Wow, what a day, <laughs> you know, a, and you want to have this, uh, this sensation for, I want to have this sensation till the end of my life. You know, this will mean I lived a life that, you know, was worth living. And I get to the end, I say, wow, boom. Okay, and I'm ready to pass it on. Yeah, I just, just, just want to put an emphasis on that. We're sitting here in the, close by the river on, on, on this log and people are walking by. And uh, I guess nobody will say that the, the two fitness trainers are in the conversation here. <laughs> <laughs> we, we look like just, just a normal human being. Yes. Our, our muscles are not somewhat uh, no, out look, there. It's uh, a little it, stick. It's, you know, it's, a, it's a normal body. You know? It's and, a normal and, body. And what you're saying, you know, I want to, to lay down in, in, in my bed in the evening and think, wow, what a day, how, how I feel. And 
it's more important probably than having a huge uh, bicep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, but, so, but you know, like many times. So, people... so really, that's that's the question: Where is our practice leading us? What is the what, what is the goal? Development, the sense of bliss, the sense of joy, the really the understanding that I live my life to the fullest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also uh, what you're mentioning, you know, this uh, continuation towards the path of harmony, synergy, as, and and all the refinement, which is love and you know relationships, and all of this comes together into a unique mixer, mixer that also goes in the direction of the discovery of your own identity. This is also something that is uh, is powerful, right? And then. This, and we are using uh, movement as a tool to do this. But again, not only, because we are not only doing that, we are also in the, in the process of um, creating some, some uh, bodies that are unique, like some minds that are you know, extremely capable of doing things. And uh, you're saying you, you don't see things, uh, and I would say, yeah, you don't see, in, in the in the uh, outer, outer uh, sculpturing of the body but this is a good sign because in in nature all great things are hidden you know <laughs> like you need really wait, need to wait till they do something <laughs> <laughs> wait <laughs> until they do something yes, yeah? yes this is this is like this art of hiding is beautiful and it's present exactly when there is usually high level material of any kind like for example you see a tiger uh, just walking there, lying on the ground. Then the prey comes. All hell breaks loose. The fire is burning, and this creature is as what, what, what a raw power is. Uh, how did it come from? The 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 precision of actions, the silence, you know, like the lightness that it has. At the same time, it's this fierce, huge beast, right? And and then, whenever it's, it's done, the creature is done. Okay, goes back, right? hiding again. Yeah, yeah. Man, you know, I'm even thinking that. Uh, uh, nature loves uh, efficiency somewhat. It, it, it likes to operate uh, while not using too much of, of resources. And if you think about most of the training and, and, and sports disciplines, it's about using more resources and, and, and putting them out into the periphery, which slightly goes against uh, the law of nature and, and the law of movement. Mm -hmm. If you move, you are looking for consequential uh, quality you, yes. you you want to go <laughs> one movement to lead to the other in in the most fluent way without any uh, contractions Block, yeah. and blockages so if that starts to happen in the body first thing that will happen as an adaptation mm -hmm. you will become uh, quiet normal so to say in the body yes. your body will start to lose whatever is not uh, necessary for the fluidity and efficiency so somewhat our culture got really derailed in the way we see a, a fit human being. Yeah, so I, say. I, I, every time I, when I see people doing this absurdity, I go crazy. It's just, they eat a lot, too much, and then they want to burn all the calories that they've eaten, for example. And then they continue this cycle forever. Well, just eat less. No, it's just eat less and don't do this thing that you hate, right? And, but then the problem is, but if I eat less, then I don't need to do fitness, so what do I do? You know where, where it goes? It's just people are really confused out of these things. And then it becomes these cycles that people reiterate because in the end they don't know how to fill their days. And that, that is where questions like, what is it exactly that we're doing? They're powerful and they're coming to fill a gap. So that we can offer some po possibilities that before were not present. So it's like now a person understands this, let's say he starts to eat less, uh, just a, a fun example, yeah, but you know, and then comes to us and then now, you know, the way lo you look doesn't, it's not that important anymore, you know, uh, and this, this uh, bit of the aesthetics is just one, you know, like every time I see these uh, huge people uh, building the armor and I always think, what are you building an armor for? <laughs> you know, and then the same is you see someone that is too skinny. It's like, uh, okay, probably why, what, what disgusts you, and what are you running away? What do you want to disappear from, right? And there is the, the, the manifestation of the of the physicality is part of the psyche that they are communicating, right? So the, the structure the follows uh, it, the intention. Yes, it follows the intention, right? So we have, in a way, the mind that is crystallizing into the body and then the body that is, you know, like um, uh, evaporating, you know, if I can say, right? 
uh, in, into creating the mind and this virtual uh, world as well. If there was uh, one uh, thing to say before we close this conversation, I would say as a suggestion to myself and to many others, uh, don't be uh, too pragmatic about your actions. I do this for that and that effect because evolution doesn't necessarily work that way. Mm -hmm. It tries and fails and tries and it plays a lot. Um, go out there and play. Uh, go out, uh, choose your playground and, and explore. And eventually, if you are interested, you will become interesting. <laughs> Something will start to appear out of, out, your, out of your research, out of your life. You'll get fulfilled by your own interest, by your own uh, explorations and, and you will be alive. You, yes. you, 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 will, you will enjoy just being human, just being physical. What yes. would you say to <laughs> No, no, no. First of all, I agree 100%. It's just uh, you want to stay in a place where enthusiasm is high. You know, you can find this through play, through things that give you joy, through the interaction with that, you know, through in, 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 uh, in various endeavors. But the, this, this enthusiasm creates spontane spontaneity and then from spontaneity you create authenticity and nothing can disrupt this process. You are in a golden bowl, you know, like in a golden bubble. Nobody can penetrate yeah, it. Becoming you know, who you are. Who you are. Yeah. That's the thing. And nobody can take away who I am. Now, with, with this in mind, I have, I have the, the highest of the powers, right? Uh, so this is, uh, this is absolutely essential. And then regarding going out there and playing, for sure, we, we became so, so serious about everything that we are doing. Everything, you know, it's just, uh, it needs to be precisely this and that. And, you know, many times I walk and I'm, I'm doing my thing maybe close to a rail. Yes, I'm exploring and I'm doing certain maneuvers on the rail. And somebody comes and really wants to know, but what is this? Is this, you know, it's, it's a particular dance that you're doing. Is this, is that? Why do you want to define this? No, leave a little door open in the definition because the definition, what it is, is creating some terms, no? Like some terms, which are in essence some uh, lines that you're drawing around yourself. But if you leave a little door open, then you can also get out there and see that maybe what you thought was everything that is present is actually just a little room inside the house and the house is, is on a hill. And then the hill uh, is connected to a mountain and then you start your actual process, right? Let's stay curious about uh, who we can become or who we are becoming every day and with each uh, action and exploration we venture upon. Uh, Marcello, thank you very much for, for this beautiful conversation and uh, thank you for coming to Vilnius and uh, uh, sharing what you do with, with our community here so openly, so uh, open-heartedly. Yeah, no, it was thank really beautiful. Thanks for inviting me. Also the community, no, it was great. Uh, I can see all the work that you're doing, like the people coming with the, like dreamy eyes, which is something that you don't see often. Not because I came, it's just because they're interested in this, right? And this, it is a great sign that the work is being done well. You know, like when they come, like kids, you know, like uh, ready to go, as you were saying, like with the full exploration. And then this is where all the, all the good directions, all the good journeys start. So thank you again for inviting me and for uh, you know, being such a great host. Very nice, thank you.